We can now get on with the details. Be bold for change. That's the clarion call to all leaders across the world as International Women's Day is celebrated globally today. Today is set aside by the United Nations to recognize primarily the struggle for women's rights. This year, the theme 5050 by 2030 is a rallying call for the inclusion of more women in leadership positions. Here in Ghana, various events have been lined up by government and other organizations to make the day special. Here at Door News, we have a special edition of the AM and Super Morning shows today, hosted by wife of Vice President Samira Baumia. Child marriage and sex for jobs is what they've been talking about. First, here's their take on child marriages. You know, there's this ceiling when we are trying to climb. Bishalo, for instance, when you are given your job, you are accused of getting it through sexual favors, unfortunately. How did you feel about that? How did you um, go past that to excel and prove that you were worth the position that had been given you? She set her face like flint. In the, in the, in the, for me, in the first place, my sense of self should not come from somebody who really doesn't even know me. Mm. Um, if the person thinks I got my job through sexual favors, surely there are other more rewarding and less difficult jobs <laughs> I could have used that sexual favor for. And in any case, this is a man, you're sleeping with other women, so why haven't you given them this job through sexual favors? But you see, you know that as a woman, you're coming into a space that men think they own. And men believe they should keep that space to themselves. So they're going to throw everything at you just to get you out of that space. Once you recognize that, then you recognize those kinds of comments for the distractions that they are. Mm. And you just focus on doing what you've been called to do and to do an excellent job. And so I don't get my sense of self from from people's from opinions people, no. especially people who don't know you know. No, you, you I know. start from God. What God tells me is what matters to me. If God says go and do this assignment, I may not like the assignment, but I have to trust that there's a reason why, why I have been asked to do it. Exactly. To do it. And also you believe that the person who has sent you would empower you to do it. So for me, that's my starting point. And so I go in with that confidence that comes from the person who has given me the assignment. And then you know that, yes, you're a woman. Unlike men, one woman's failure is deemed to be the failure of all women. Yes. Because remember, we don't have a right to fail, to make mistakes, to be mediocre. Men have been failing throughout history, but they do not think that other men should be judged by the failures of one man. But for women, it is different. So you, you come in also with that recognition. So you know that you need to apply yourself. You need to work really hard. You need to... Um, you need to be very diligent in what you're doing. You need to um, constantly add to your knowledge base and to your skills. You are leading a team, but you have to be a team. You have to lead, but you have to also be a part of the team. You have to carry the people you are leading along with you. So for women, yes, it does take a lot. And at the same time, like Amma said, you're juggling being a wife. You're juggling being a mother. You're juggling being a daughter. When you get a certain age, your parents now start taking up more of your time than mm -hmm. they used to. Yes. The dynamics change. Being a daughter now is a position of responsibility, not privilege. So you are now a daughter. Um, you are, you are a sister, you are a friend to many. It's Not a lot to, to mention juggle. you mother, your husband. Ex <laughs> exactly. When you're counting the children, children, yes, the husbands come first. But for me, it's also, I had to recognize that I cannot excel at everything, everything. Mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. I think that's where we also put a huge burden on ourselves in thinking that I can do all these things fantastically. So last year, my husband knew I was not going to be a great wife, a great mother. Something had to give. Something well, had to give. <laughs> yes. yes. My father had to recognize that for Something this year. Something had to give, yes. They're not going to get you out bringing you food every week. So it's, it's a juggling. But at every time, you are doing the best that you can do with right. what you but, have. Right. Uh, but, you know, back to the issue of, so are we our own enemies? Do we ourselves, women, cut each other slack? We know of what happened with Madame Otiko after what happened. How did it's you yes and especially no. coming no, it's from yes and another no. woman? The thing woman. about women being their own worst enemies, for me, it's always been a yes and no. 
no, we are not our own worst enemies. When women, the, 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 the actions or the comments from other women that people use it to tag women are their own worst enemies, are not bec it's not because they are women, it's human. Yes. Humans can be mean, humans can be nasty, humans make mistakes, humans can judge you unfairly. Men do that every day. Men to do themselves. worse things for them, to, to themselves. themselves. But nobody right. ever says men, men are, are their worst, worst enemies. Yes. But the yes aspect of it is that people say that because they know that society is giving us such a hard time so that they do not believe that other women should also should. be doing it. Exactly. So it's also a recognition that we're getting a bad, um, yeah. Society, yeah, we're getting yeah, a bad so, deal so from society, so we expect we have each other's and back. It is true. And we, it is true. We we need to be more supportive, less judgmental of other women. We also tend to judge. We'll see a woman. Uh, why is her hair like that? And why is she wearing this? And you don't know her story. You don't know what she's going yeah, through. You yeah. don't know. Maybe she's had to rush, be, been up all yeah, night with a baby she's in been hospital. All sometimes, sometimes, exactly. Sometimes it's positive criticism, and I think what Charlotte said is that it's not so much a male. Or female thing, but it's just a human thing to sometimes be mean or sometimes even make comments that perhaps would help the other one. So it's how you take it. But Samir, I want to bring up the issue of compatibility. Men are from Mars, women are from Venus. We've heard this as a title of a book and everywhere. We think from different sides <laughs> you know, of our brain. Whichever way we, we look at it, we all have a part to play, an important part to play. And we cannot downplay anyone's part, whether it's a man's own or women. It's true that it seems as if women are coming in from the back, either because we were made second or whatever. But clearly, we were made for a very important role, some of which Auntie Joyce has mentioned and others here have also mentioned. We were made to play a very critical role in making sure that things happen. Yes, Whilst men are being tunnel vision, we are multitasking, we are seeing the broader picture. So we have our part to play, they have their part to play. I must say that any team that has only one-sided never yes. does well. Yeah. It has we, to we have need both. Each other. So I think that both sides, that balance, finding that balance is very critical. But I, I see that the lack of recognition that we need each other is what's creating the problem. So I'm sure but all of Ghana, you women... Samira, I'm not sure that it's true that there's been lack of recognition for women. I've seen that women have been recognized but it's abundantly. It is, it is in the leadership. number of women. But even because number of even women. for where you were... Okay, so I'd like to ask even you... Even number of women. In, in every institution, do you think there are enough women represented? Do you think there's the no glass position. ceiling? Do you think no. the woman gets the promotion even um, if, if she had... Do you think it's... I think that those challenges... are fair to women. Okay. Those challenges all exist and you have to make extra effort to be able to break through. But the important thing so is that it, in what, Ghana... So what sort of things did you do as Mona Kote to get to where you are today so that we can inspire other uh, young uh, ladies others, who yes. are watching to say, okay, this is what she went through, mm -hmm. but she did it in nonetheless. So fortunately for us, we do live in a country where even though there's a bias against women, there's also a part of our culture that supports women. There's also a matrilineal system that supports women. There's a, a system that um, agrees that women can be leaders as well. So as Mona Kote, fortunately for me, I started out as a firstborn, so as a leader in the first place. I also started out having parents who fortunately were educated and who understood understood that I can do what anybody else can do. I also went into an industry that was very male dominated. However, because I did not recognize myself as the weaker sex, other people also didn't see me as the weaker yeah. sex. So it starts with you. If you go showing yourself as, oh, I'm weaker, I'm the woman, I can't do this, or when you're given a task, you start to give excuses, then you create a problem for yourself. But if you project your strength, your wisdom, I can do this. It is difficult for people to say that you can't do it and actually go through with that. They may say it, but eventually they'll have to give you that That, that is inspiring, but a, a few but you weeks catch ago... A, you catch some flack for that. Yes, Sorry, yes, yes, yes. But you, you need to learn to take the flack. Exactly. You need and to learn to take about it. Be tough yes. about um, it. Yes. Uh, it come. I think a few weeks ago there was this special on Joy, uh, the Super Morning Show actually, about sexual harassment mm -hmm. and how women who wanted to climb the corporate ladder had to give sexual favors
service. Otherwise, they were not getting the promotion. And it just happens from job to job. So it's not even as simple as saying I'm walking yes, away to true. find another job. Because yeah. you may just walk into a worse boss. Yes. And I'm sure probably some of us sitting around here have experienced that. How were you able to you know, rise above it? Or if you didn't, what advice would you give to somebody who is going through that? What are the channels? What do you do? A beautiful woman, a man says, if you don't have sex with me, first of all, you don't get the job or you don't get in your promotion. Okay. I've heard stories about um, women who have said so that they, 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 they faced um, issues of sexual harassment at their workplace. And um, sometimes, it, initially when I used to hear it, I kind of found it difficult to believe mm -hmm. because some of the men that they mentioned looked to me like men who wouldn't. Decent men. Exactly. So that, uh, yes, they looked to me like Pretty decent men. men. And I found it difficult to believe that it was true. But then, of course, I have no reason to, to disbelieve them. So I do believe that there are women who, who, who go through that. What I can say is that, of course, um, I, I, don't, I, I know that there are, if you put in the effort, I don't, I don't necessarily believe that there's no way out so that you have to hop from job to job. I can understand that there is a situation of the fear of um, stigmatization if the issue is reported. But to be very honest, it's, it's not an issue that I find very difficult. I find very easy to, um, um, to believe that it's that widespread. It is widespread. It is widespread. And I can talk about myself. I, I decided that under no circumstances would I allow my boss to have anything to do with me. My reason was simple. I would be so angry if the night before you have hunky pankied with me. And then the <laughs> next day, <laughs> and the next day, not even giving me orders, trying to show off that you are my boss and putting me down for something I haven't done. I did face quite a number of temptations. But that resolve helped me. And I was always bold to say that, you know, this is my principle. I was always very charming about it. You know, so charming about it. Oh, you don't want to do that. Because can you imagine if you did something with me and the next day I came and I flaunted these things, you'd be you'd disgraced. Be you know, so I think that th there's a way in which we need to help one another to be strong. Yes. So those are very strong women there. Very soon we'll bring you the views of market women and what they think on this day. But let's go back and take their take on child's mar child marriages. We're supposed to play that previously, but what we just played was their take on sex for jobs. Now let's go and listen to them on child marriages. Evening, you can be divorced, you can be widowed, you can be separated, anything can happen. So giving out a child in marriage and thinking that that secures a child's future by itself is a very, um, is not a... It's <laughs> an unfortunate <thought> process. <laughs> it's a thinking I process. Know, and yeah. so we have to look at all the... And you'll be surprised to find, for instance, that culture was not the top reason that um, was behind the phenomenon. Um, poverty, ignorance, as Clara said. So the perceived access, financial access benefit. to pornography. Mobile, yes, mobile phones was one of the reasons. It's a very emotional topic for a lot of us who are not legal people, but who are mothers and who are people who realize that this doesn't help in terms of productivity or even growing the economy. Um, how does a child go into marriage when we, what has just been described, marriage is not something for children, it's for adults. I mean, it takes a lot. And now that we have identified the problem, that is a very key thing. You must first identify the problem. We've identified that. It's ignorance, it's uh, poverty, it's about access to pornography and so forth. Now what do we do about that? How do we champion this cause? Yeah. Um, like my fellow ladies here have said, it's not so much about law because then it goes underground, but it's more about education and awareness. Um, fortunately for us, all these children have mothers. Mothers who can make a difference. But we do appreciate that in our society and culture, sometimes it's difficult for a the woman's voice don't to have be heard. A voice, yes. So gender parity in parenting and even being able to sponsor a child, this is why it's important that as women, we should make ourselves financially strong so that we can sponsor our children through education and so forth, even if a man or the husband or the head of the household doesn't. That way, we have a say in what happens to the child. 
Charlotte spoke about the fact that um, women or, or the, the children are given away because there are no funds and sometimes because they are pregnant. The fact that there are no funds should not be a good reason. A mother should realize that selling your child will not resolve your poverty. Also, a pregnant child, um, pregnancy should not be another reason because you sh as a mother should be able to help your, ch your, your child with her child right. so that she can become strong to be so a you're, better you're citizen. The emphasis should so be I think on it's the education, okay. education for the mothers and the awareness of the difficulties that this child will go through. I think with that understanding and once we're able to educate at community level and we're able to tell the story clearly um, in terms of pictorial and everything, the mothers will feel that pain and they'll be able to protect their children without even needing the law. Because a lot of these things happen on the blind side of the law anyway. So it is about education and appropriate education at community level so that it's understood, it's assimilated, and then mothers are able to protect their children. Okay. Child marriages, I think I'd like your take on it. We discussed um, what's, what the influence are, what is causing it? What, how, how are we to, to bring it down or even eradicate it if possible? Where do we start from? Is it the community? Is this the legal process? What do we do as a people? First of all, I think we ought to let parents know that it's actually inhuman mm -hmm. to get your little girl to marry usually somebody who's as old as her grandfather or father. You know, it's very inhuman to do that. That's the first thing. Parents have to understand that. A lot of times, parents think that, you know, it is a, a cultural thing that needs to be done. But, you know, culture is very dynamic. It doesn't stay static. So as development comes, culture also reshapes itself. You pick the good things. Why would a child get married at 12, 13, 14, 15? You know, some time ago when we needed a lot of uh, children to help with our farming and our other uh, communal activities, we thought it was good whilst the child was young and, you know, not even virile, because 14, really. 14 is pretty young, it's yes. Pretty, but it's, pretty it's too young. young. So I think we should start with the parents. And then from the parents, let's go to the community leaders, the community leaders who are mostly men who should understand that. And, and, and then we come to the legal systems within the country. We have to apply all of them at the same time. Because you can't just talk to the parents and, and refuse to apply the law. The law must be applied. And I think that when the law is applied and people have been spoken to, they will understand that, well, you pay a price for breaking the law. And then I, I also think, I don't know, what, what's your take on, on, maybe we should also highlight the ills of it, because um, like we're talking about during the break, some parents mean well, so maybe it's, it may be a little unfortunate to vilify them because they either do not understand the repercussions of it, or they, in certain cases they feel like they're doing the children the favor because yes. maybe she's playing around with this young boy or this man, and instead of him getting her pregnant and running away, they insist he marries her off and then she's safe and secure. So what do we do about conscientizing people, letting people know about the ills of it and how in the long term it rather negatively impacts on them? I think there has to be a concerted effort at awareness creation, Samira. Um, and it doesn't just rest with government or some institution or, you know, the, 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 the um, defense services. It has to be the nation as a whole. Every single Ghanaian has a responsibility to make sure that this canker doesn't happen. So I was saying something during the break. I think that we need like um, an urban rural mentorship program. If every single accomplished woman picked three rural women to educate and to mentor on this issue and to teach them the ills of, you know, um, child marriages, I think we would create a very good footprint and a huge impact. 
how about you? Um, just to add to what Auntie Joyce and Alma have said, and as I said earlier on, I think that largely the most effective tool would be education. It is where there is darkness, it is only light that, that can largely solve the problem. And we have agreed that the, the bigger problem is that of ignorance as well as poverty. So yes, we should educate fathers, mothers, brothers, sisters, families, and communities, and the entire nation um, on this issue, the effects of it, the causes of it, and then how we can, we should also help, of course, it also means that addressing the poverty issue is important because poverty is also at, at the center at the center of it. So largely, I think it's going to be, an, it's, it's a national effort. We should all have an interest in that if we all put some effort into this situation, we should, we, we should be able to, to resolve it. Leaving it to the law, yes, it would address after it has happened. But what we should be uh, interested in is stopping it from happening. Preventative, exactly. yes, yes. Exactly. Okay. I yeah. think uh, something that we are all missing also is the truth. Isn't that a beautiful conversation? So that is a team of very strong women. We've got Samira Balmia who hosted the Super Morning Show this morning and Madam Mona Korte. Well, Samira Balmia, you do know, is the second lady. Mona Korte, former uh, finance, Deputy Finance Minister. Joyce Aye, who is uh, the founder of Salt and Light Ministries. Ama Sapombewa, who is Senior Director uh, Newmont Africa, Charlotte Ose, uh, of course, the Electoral Commissioner, and Clara Kazati, who is a private legal practitioner, talking about sex for jobs and their take on child marriages. Well, let's move away and get to the, se the first lady. That is the, the bit for the second lady. The first lady held a forum on the International Women's Day today herself, and she invited women from across sectors here in the country. Well, what she's doing is that she's pledging her commitment towards inclusion of women in decision making. The World Economic Forum predicts the gender gap won't close entirely until 2186. We cannot wait that long. This is why the idea of being bold for change is so important. What if we all work together to take actions and make contributions that will get us closer to gender parity? We would sooner than later have a generation of women who are equal partners with men in all spheres of life. It is important that as we forge on, we remember the many women who have made great contributions to get us closer to gender parity. Women who have empowered other women and inspired us all. Let us acknowledge some of these women. Nanaya Asantua, who taught us that gender, size, or circumstances should not stop us. Women MPs of the First Republic, like Susanna Al-Hassan, Sofa Adoku, Grace Ayensu, and seven others, who taught us that politics is not for men, but for humanity. And many others who have been trailblazers in empowering other women in politics, finance, small and medium businesses, fashion, the arts, and so many other areas. But we know we still have a long way to go. There is so much to be done. Our women cannot wait any longer. Our girls cannot wait any longer. We have customary laws that discriminate against women in ownership of land. We still have violence against women. Women are less likely to get financing. Women lack the necessary support to participate in politics. In many respects, the glass ceiling remains for many women. We are here today to share ideas on how we can empower other women, change their lives, that of their families and our society. Let's hear you, because if we don't speak up, if we don't act, we will not achieve gender parity. It is going to be a long, arduous battle, but I believe we are up to it. We should be the shoulders that other women stand on. We should be the voices for those who have no voice. We should be the army that fights to save other women. Achieving gender parity and giving other women the dignity of economic independence is our responsibility. It takes me and you we can and we will do this. 
First Lady Rebecca Akufuado there. Well, are you ready to be bold for change? Former First Lady Nanakun Edwaji Rawlings, who was also there, wants female parliamentarians to deal with issues concerning women from a purely bipartisan perspective. Political parties and institutions such as the NCCE also have a major role to play in contributing to the attitudinal shift towards participation of women in politics. Today, political parties have gone beyond establishing a women's wing or appointing a few token women who do not even have real power. It's just like putting a little bit of you know, salt on your, your egg. We want the egg itself, right, ladies? Yes. However, there has to be a major push, whether it is the churches, it is the legal, it is the schools, it is private enterprise. There has to be a push, a major push, at the societal and community level to embrace women. It has to be done. This can be achieved through continuous and consistent campaigns at district and national levels that educate the public on gender parity in politics. And Akuna Raj, my role is there. Tell you what, it was not just about first ladies because there were entrepreneurs who were also invited and they have been speaking to Hannah Odami. We already have the power, that we already have the greatness. What we have to do now is to deploy it. And by deploying, meaning that we need to think bigger. Instead of looking at us maybe wanting to start a business just to serve the immediate community, why don't you want to start a business just to open up to the world? Sometimes a lot of us feel depressed because we feel like we don't have the self-esteem, the capacity and the capability in us. But I want to tell any woman out there that for some of us who through every kind of tragedy, every, every kind of pain, every kind of suppression, every single day still wants to make progress, you have to remember that there's something in you that can push you further than what you think, than what you imagine. That the empowerment lies in you already, the greatness lies in you already, the potential lies in you already, and the pot possibility lies in you already. It's up to you to be believe it. It's up to you to be courageous in the face of rejection, to be courageous in the face of shame, to be courageous in the face of tragedy, to say that even if someone rejects me, it's okay. Even if tragedy comes, it's okay. Once you are able to get over, just move that thin line from fear to faith. You are able to triumph. And I am now throwing the challenge to women ministers and women MPs to think about getting together, creating a forum where they can meet women entrepreneurs like myself, understand what our challenges are. Because if we talk about building our um, economy, it's entrepreneurs that will build this economy. And there's so many uh, SMEs employing so many Ghanaians, and we employ so many women. So if they reach out to us, understand what our challenges are, they can present these challenges even better, be the voices of the unheard, and help us to develop Ghana better. I think that has been lacking in the past, where a lot of women are put into positions and they have no idea what women are doing for the country. And the women continue to struggle on their own because they are in private sector and they are supposed to be able to manage on their own. So that is my message out to them, you know, flying on the wings of what our first lady said. So that's what went down with the First Lady, Rebecca Kufuado. Well, President Kufuado himself has been to the uh, Children, Gender and Social Protection Ministry where he's been interacting with uh, women groups as well as women in the ministry. Uh, we'll bring you more on that in a subsequent bulletin. But away from all of that, we can look at some young women who are trying to make a difference. John Yusuf's Justice Bedu has been to the Bunahafu regional town of Bikim to meet some young girls braving their loss to study welding and fabrication in a male-dominated class and are now even making a machine that can pound your fufu for you. Here's his report. Tagged away on the outskirts of Bechem in the Bongahaf region, these young people are breaking new ground. This is a welding and fabrication class. It's a path less taken by many, and so the numbers here are few. 
and so are the girls. I've come here to meet three of them. Mariama, 21, Ellen, 20, and Rosemary, 22. They're just the few women slugging it out here in a class full of men studying for a job mainly done by males in Ghana. They said this work is not meant for women. My mother used to say that I want um, my daughter to be a nurse or either being a teacher or police. And I asked her why, you see. Nowadays, everybody is a crutchy. In girls in Bechem, some of them are there. If they completed junior high school, they don't want to continue their education again. And some of them have completed senior high school, but they are still in the house. Women are held back from reaching their potential, especially in rural Ghana. So the ladies, they always talk about staying home, doing that thing, but you have to try, push yourself. You go in force that I can do it. Because if you don't say that, they will always put you back like you are a lady. What a man can do, a lady can do it. So it's only in Africa. What people think, maybe the mechanical work or say craft work is done by mills in but Bichim. When... The main occupation here is what? Farming. So they most, most of the time send their females for children to the farm because they don't see the essence of females engaging themselves in the world. Men who rented jobs over here. But uh, when we, we started, there were only two, but now we are up 10. So it, it, you know, it means what they are what? patronizing. Many girls have been forced to abandon their dreams because of gender-based stereotypes, which usually makes them feel second fiddle to men. And in this country, this is even more evident in the technical and engineering field. But now, to break the poverty cycle, it is even more urgent that we create a better Ghana where the workplace is more gender sensitive and responds to the needs especially of women. And the girls here are a shining example of that ideal world. The result of the work these girls do here abound. They are even manufacturing fufu making machines which would reduce the preparation time for the local staple to less than 10 minutes. Like you burn fufu, look at your hands. It's not easy, but this one, you just switch on your, your machine and you get your fufu. The integration of women into the national economy is now urgent. They form the bulk of our country's people and their future is as critical as everything else, especially on a day like the International Women's Day. Justice Beidou, Joy News, Pechim in the Bronga region. It's all about being bold for change. And this is a call to all women, young, old children out there, that you can make it. And, of course, we're celebrating all women in the world today. Very soon we'll tell you how the market women are getting bold to bring about change. They're still watching the polls with me, Gitti and Dorothea.